Alright guys, so welcome back to another video. Um, uh, so let me actually show you guys where we are currently. So I actually just wrote this out right now. This is my plan for the rest of this course. So, so far we've covered everything up until number 7. Okay, yeah, I think 7 was just uploaded like just now, I think. Right? Conditional statements. Please tell me uh, that I messed this up. Intro to programming variables, data types. Oh, okay, yeah. It's the data types and literals was episode number 3. That's right. Okay. Sorry about that. And then, okay, so we are, we're on episode number 7 right now. So we're going to cover Boolean and logical, Boolean slash logical operators. Okay, but I just wanted to keep you guys on track. The, we're going to be learning the rest of these things uh, later on. There's also one thing that I do need to talk about, and that's scope. That's very important, and I keep, like, I'm so worried that I'm not going to cover it, even though I know I am. But we're going to get to that in, I guess, episode number 10. Okay, so we're on episode number 6, and we're going to talk about a Boolean and, or Boolean slash logical operators. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. So there are three logical operators. You can also call them Boolean operators, okay? So they pretty much look like this. Let's go ahead and uh, create a file. And let's just say Boolean.js. I'm really bad at naming these things, but hopefully you guys aren't as terrible as I am. But it's really hard, like when it comes to naming JavaScript files, it's really hard figuring out what to name them. We could do everything in one file, but I don't like doing that. I like keeping everything organized. So there are three types of logical operators. And the whole point of logical operators is to connect two or more relational expressions into one. Or we can also reverse the logic of an expression. Okay, so there are two operators that we use to join two conditions together. So in the last video, I showed you guys how to use conditions to form um, conditional statements, right? If condition, then do this, right? Else, do something else. If this, or else if this, do that. Okay, so if you guys didn't watch that video, definitely watch that video. But let's just say if we need to join two different conditions together to form the final condition, right? How do we do that? We use logical operators. Okay, so give a, here's a good example, right? Let's say we only want to uh, let's say we only want to go to the park if two conditions are met, right? So let's just say condition. Let me zoom in a little bit. Condition. Oh, that's too big. Condition number one, if it is sunny, okay? So if it is sunny, and let's do condition number two, um, what else? If it is 70 degrees, if it is greater, or at least 70 degrees. Okay, so if these two conditions are satisfied, okay, then we're going to go to the park. So we're going to say if condition one and condition two then we will go to the park and i know i'm kind of like just writing like some pseudocode but i just want you guys to understand the thought process the logic before we really get into the code that's the most important part right the code the, the javascript syntax that can wait the important part is understanding the thought process and the actual logic right that's the fundamental of programming okay so and I put a lot of emphasis on this and, okay, because and is a logical operator. And what this logical operator does is it connects two expressions into one, okay? Now, in order for this whole condition to be true, both expressions must be true. Otherwise, every, it's, it's false otherwise, right? So if at least one of these conditions are false, the entire condition is false. And let's explain, let's think, of, let's think about that, right? So think of it like this, right? Remember, our, remember how we said earlier, we will only go to the park if two conditions are met, if it's sunny and if it's at least seventy degrees. But if one of those conditions fail, we're not going to go to the park. That's how the AND operator works. It's also known as a conjunction. If you want to go into more like you know Boolean algebra or uh, discrete mathematics, that's what they call it in those senses. But in programming senses, we just use we just call it AND. Right? And the truth value of this condition, right? This is one condition now because we're joining these two conditions into one with the and operator. And the truth value of this is going to be determined on the truth value of both of these. So if these two conditions, uh, if they're both true, then the entire truth value of this whole condition will be true. Okay? If at least one of these conditions are false, then this whole thing will fail. 
Okay, and if both are false, it also it also fail. And if you think about it, right, if we speak it out in like the English sense, right? If we say, if it is sunny, and if it is at least seven degrees, then we will go to the park, right? They're both true. But what if we said this? If it is, so if it is sunny, right? Is that true or false? Let's say it's not sunny. So the condition number one fails. So since it's not sunny, um, and since it is, but it is seventy degrees, but it's not sunny. We're still not going to go to the park because this condition fails. Okay, so let me actually see if I can write out like a table real quick because I, I think the best way to really understand these values is by using a true table. So let me write a multi-line comment for you guys. This is how you write a multi-line multi comment. You do forward slash asterisk, asterisk space, uh, enter, and now you can write as many lines as you want. Okay, so let's do this. Let's say, let's do a simple truth table. This is what we call a truth table. So typically you have... A and B, okay, so 1, or let's just say T for true, and F for false, right, so let's say this, so true, true, let me move this up there, okay, and this looks kind of weird or ghetto, but trust me, so if both conditions, so if both A and B are true, so in this case, A is condition 1, or proposition 1, and B is proposition number 2, so if A and B are both true, then the truth value of that condition is going to be 1. And we can actually label this as A and B. This is how you would label and in discrete mathematics. Okay, but you can also just say and like that. So the value of that is going to be 1. If A is true but B is false, the value of A and B is going to be, or I should say T and F. 1 is also a, a synonym for uh, true. And zero is a sentiment for false, but let's just be consistent and use T and F. Okay, so if F and T, right, so if A is false and B is true, it's still going to be false. Okay, because remember, both conditions need to be met in order for and to be true. And if both conditions are false, then it's also false as well. Okay, so hopefully that makes some sense. I know it's a little bit weird, but again, I had this table drawn out, but let's actually go ahead and apply this concept to code right because i think it'd be better to understand it through code but i do want to make sure i explain this before so it's more of like a formal definition okay so let's do this so let's go ahead and say um i, th I think a good way to do this would be let's just declare couple variables so let's see let my age equals 18 let min age equal 21 okay so my age is 18 but the min age is 21 so let's say this let's say if my age so if I'm at least 18, okay, or if I'm at least 18, and if uh, if I'm at least under 20, if I'm under 21, so I have to be at least 18 and under 21, okay, so if my age, uh, I guess we can say this, if my age is greater than or equal to 18, okay, so we're at least 18, and uh, we are under 21, so we can't be, or we can say we're 21 or under, so if we're in this range, okay, now let's think about it. Is this condition true? So my age is 18, right? So my age is greater than or equal to 18. That is true. That relation is true, okay? Because 18 is greater than or equal to 18. And now we have the second condition, right? We're joined these two conditions with the AND operator. This is the AND operator. This is what the AND operator looks like. So we're saying... Is my age less than or equal to 21? Or I, I should I should have said min age since we already have a variable declared for that. And that is true, right? That is true. My age is less than or equal to min age. And that min age could be anything. It could be like the age to go on a roller coaster or drink or whatever, right? Now, both of these propositions or conditions are true. So when we use the and operator on it, it's also going to be true. So if I do cons.log... I'm valid. Let's just say that, for example, right? And let me open up my uh, terminal. And let's just do... Let me zoom out a little bit, because this is a little bit big. Let's do node boolean.js. And you're going to see I'm valid, because both of these conditions are met. And that's what and... That's how and works. You need to have both conditions to be true. Let's change it up a little bit, so you guys can see, you know, really see how this whole works. So let's do this. Let's change my age to 17. Okay, now, now watch this. Is my age greater than or equal to 18? That is false. Okay? However, my age is, in fact, less than 
minage, right? 17 is less than or equal to 21. But since this condition fails, but this condition succeeds, because of the and operator, both needs to be true. And you can kind of look at this true table over here, right? In this case, A is going to be this first condition and B is going to be the second condition, right? We have a false and a true condition, FT, and the value of that is going to be F. And if you see over here, if we run this code, nothing's going to happen, right? We can also just add an else case. We can just say not valid, like that, right? And we can just run this again. You're going to see it says not valid. Okay, hopefully that makes some sense. And likewise, we can also change this up too. We can change this back to 18. We can satisfy this first condition and we can look at the second condition, right? We can change min age to, um, we can change min age to um, 16, right? Now watch this. So my age is in fact greater than or equal to 18, but is my age less than or equal to min age? No, that's false, right? So we have true and false and the value of that, the conjunction of that is going to be false. You can look at this in the true table over here, T and F. So this is called a true table, by the way. I highly suggest you guys look up what a true table is. It would help you better understand these logical operators and stuff. Okay. You're going to see it still is not valid because we have true and false, which leads to false. And finally, we can have both of these conditions fail. We can change my age to 16. Okay, so 16 is not greater than or equal to 18. And uh, 16 is not less than or equal to 16. Actually, let me change this to, um, it's a little bit tricky, 17, I think, yeah. So 17, so this is, this is false, and this is also false. So since they're both false, it's going to execute the else case. In this case, there you go, not valid. Okay, so hopefully that makes some sense with logical operators. We can use logical operators to join together uh, conditional statements, and we can formulate. Uh, we can formulate like you know, just combine like two or more different logical uh, different conditions and just join it into one. And a good example would be, let's say for example, if you want to check if a person is in a certain range, kind of like how we did over here, right? Basically, what we were doing here originally in the first place was we were checking to see if the person is within the range of 18 to 21, right? That's what we're doing here. We're basically checking to see if their age is between 18 and 21, inclusive, which means that they're at least 18 and they're at least 21 or under. That's what we're doing here. It's very good. So you can definitely use this to check to see if like a number is within a range. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with it. Okay, so we've talked about the AND operator. Let's talk about the OR operator. Okay, so again, I think the best way to really tackle this is by really kind of like reading out English sentences to really, I think it's a good way to really like, you know, hear it out so you can, you know, see how it works. Okay, so let's go ahead and just copy this stuff again, move this on here. So let's do this. Let's deal with, let's use the same conditions, but this time instead of AND, we're going to use OR. Now, OR is also another logical operator. It connects two expressions into one. Okay. The only difference is, well, the difference is, is that one or both expressions must be true for the entire expression, the entire condition to be true. So even if one condition is false, but the other one is true, the entire thing is going to be true. Because if you think about it, or, right, it can either be this or that. As long as one of the, as, as long as one of the conditions are satisfied, you're still going to do whatever you want to do, right? And if we read out this English sentence over here, right? Think of it like this. If it is sunny, or if it is at least 70 degrees, then we will go to the park. If you think of it in like a more like realistic sense, right? So let's say if it's not sunny. So condition number one fails, right? However, it may be any kind of, it can be any kind of condition that's not sunny. It could be cloudy, right? It's not sunny, but it's cloudy. But hey, it is at least 70 degrees, condition number two is satisfied, and since that second condition is satisfied, we're still going to go ahead and go to the park. Because of that second condition being true, the entire overall expression, the entire overall condition is true. Okay? And the only time, uh, or, the only time it's going to be false is if both conditions are false, right? So let's say, for example, if it is not sunny, or let's say, for example, like this. So if it is sunny, it's not sunny. Or if it is at least 7 degrees, let's say it's not at least 7 degrees, right? So in this case, both conditions fail. Since neither condition was satisfied, then the entire expression, the entire condition is false. So we're not going to go to the park. It was not sunny, and it was also not at least 7 degrees. We're not going to go to the park. 
Okay, so let's actually, now again, let's actually implement this in code. So I guess one thing we could do is we can say this. Let's say let sunny, or let's do this, let is sunny. Let's say this is true. Let is at least, uh, is warm. Let's just say is warm. That's gonna represent the weather. And let's say this is false, okay? Now we can use these Boolean values in our condition. So we can say if is sunny, okay? Or, so that is the logical operator or, it's just two vertical bars going down, or is warm. So if at least either one of these is satisfied, we're going to go to the park. So let's just say constant log going to the park. Simple, right? Very simple. So let's execute this. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me comment this part out. So let me comment this part out. So I can comment this out by using a multi-line comment like this. Simple. All right, so let's run this again going to the park see so sunny is true but is one is false but because at least one of these conditions are satisfied we're still going to execute everything inside this code conditionally okay awesome that i think that's pretty awesome okay um and let's see i guess we can also draw out another true table for this as well which i guess i'll do so instead of a and b we'll do a or b so the way it works is if both conditions are true Perfect. Both conditions are met. We've already met the minimum condition, but they're both true. It's going to be true. True or false, right? So if at least one of the conditions is true, either A, in this case A is true, so the entire thing is going to be true. Likewise, A is false, but B is true, the entire condition is going to be true. But since both conditions are not met, they're both false, the entire thing is going to be false. Okay, and again, I highly suggest you guys learn how to, you know, highly suggest you guys look up uh, true tables. Okay, it will definitely help you a lot. Okay, so that's the OR operator. Let's talk about the last operator, the NOT operator. Now, earlier you may have seen in my previous videos, you may have seen the exclamation mark. That is the NOT operator, also known as the negation operator. And pretty much all it does is it just reverses the truth, right? It re reverses the truth value of an expression. So, for example, it makes, it's kind of like the inverse, right? It makes a truth value false, and it makes a false value true. Okay, so for example, right now you can see over here, let's set, let's do this. Let's set both of these values to false. So, it's not sunny, and it's not, it's not warm. So, let's do it else. Let's just say, not going to the park. So, if I go ahead and run this, it's going to say, not going to the park. Because both of these conditions are false. Okay? But what if I use the negation operator to change one of them, right? So is warm is false, but by adding the negation operator, we're basically saying not is warm, right? So the value of is warm is false. By adding the not operator in front of it, we're basically saying not false, which is just true. It's another word to say true. And if I run this, you're going to see it says going to the park. And why is that the case? Because, well, is sunny is in fact false. It's not sunny. But is warm, the value of is warm is false, but we negated that value, and that value is now true. So since at least one of these conditions were met, we're gonna go to the park. And that's how the negation operator works. Okay, so you can just go ahead and see this for yourself, constant log, if I do not false, the keyword, this is just going to log true. Uh, I don't even think, oh wait, I think I, there you go, true, just like that. If I do not true, it's, again, it's just the inverse. That's, that's all it is, okay? And yeah, hopefully all of that made some sense. Of course, you can always just think of ideas, think of ways to kind of like understand why you'd want to use these logical operators, but there are a lot of applications for it, okay? So, but I just wanted to show you guys how uh, these operators work and the truth value of each thing, of each, uh, of each outcome. And um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to show for now. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.